In the previous section, we studied the wave nature of light. We found that wave features such as diffraction and interference only became large when the physical distance, such as slit width or thickness of a thin film, were of roughly the same size as light's wavelength. Most ordinary objects are much larger than the wavelength of visible light. When light travels around such large objects, its wave properties can generally be ignored. The study of light in this region is called geometric optics. In geometric optics, we describe light's propagation by a straight line with a designated direction. This line is called a ray, or a ray of light. A ray of light travels in a straight line until it interacts with some physical object. The simplest example is light interacting with a flat mirror, as illustrated. The ray coming in is called the incident ray. The ray going out is called the reflected ray. The incident and reflected rays lie in a plane that is perpendicular to the mirror. The ray's direction is described by the angle between the ray and the normal to the mirror. The normal to the mirror is a line that is perpendicular to the mirror. The angle of the incident ray is called the angle of incidence, and it is written as theta sub i. The angle of the reflected ray is called the angle of reflection, and is written as theta sub r. When reflecting off a mirror, the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. This is known as the law of reflection. Reflection which obeys this law is called specular reflection. Other surfaces are very rough at the microscopic level, and as a result, light reflects off at a variety of angles. This is known as diffuse reflection. Also, many surfaces will absorb some colors of light while reflecting others in a diffuse way. This results in the wide variety of colors we see in the world around us. Light can also change its direction by a process known as refraction. We stated before that light travels in a vacuum at a speed of 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. However, in a clear substance or medium such as air, water, glass, or plastic, light travels much slower. The light is slowed because it is continually absorbed and remitted by the molecules in the medium. How much the light is slowed is described by the index of refraction, a unitless number abbreviated as n. This is just the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the given medium. Suppose the speed of light in a certain medium is only 2.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. What is the index of refraction of that medium? Correct. The exponent and units cancel, and 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. When the speed of light is slowed by a medium, it is the wavelength that changes, not the frequency. As a result, the index of refraction is also a relationship between the wavelength of light in a vacuum and in a medium. This was used in the previous section while studying thin films. When a light ray passes at an angle from one medium to another with a different index of refraction, it must change its direction. Similarly, when light travels from a faster medium to a slower medium, it turns closer to the normal. The wave picture can help to understand this. In the slower medium, the wave fronts are closer together. In order for the wave fronts to match up at the interface, the ray must be at a steeper angle. The angle between the incoming light ray and the normal is again called the angle of incidence. The angle for the outgoing ray is the angle of refraction. Often these are just referred to as theta 1 and theta 2. The relationship between these angles is given by Snell's law, which states that the index of refraction in medium 1 times the sine of the angle in medium 1 equals the index of refraction in medium 2 times the sine of the angle in medium 2, or n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. In any real situation, not all of the light will enter the new medium. Some of the light will be reflected at the interface. Suppose light in air, n equals 1.0, reaches an interface with glass, n equals 1.5, at an angle of 50 degrees. What is the angle of the refracted light? Correct. We do this problem by solving Snell's law for angle 2 and inserting the numbers. 
What is the angle of the reflected ray? Correct. The angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Now what happens if we begin with the light in the glass and have it hit incident on the air at 50 degrees? Repeat the calculation and see what happens. Your calculator should have given you an error message. The sine of angle 2 would have to be greater than 1 to get out of the glass, and that is impossible. In this case, all of the light is reflected inside the glass. This is known as total internal reflection. It is so called because all of the light is reflected and it happens inside a medium with relatively high index of refraction. It occurs when light in the medium with a relatively high index of refraction tries to enter a medium with a lower index of refraction at too high of an angle. The smallest angle for which one gets total internal reflection is called the critical angle abbreviated as theta sub c. It can be found by setting theta 2 to 90 degrees, the maximum angle light can leave at, and solving for theta 1. Since the sine of an angle can never be greater than 1, it is clear from the equation that total internal reflection will only occur if n sub 2 is less than n sub 1. As a rule, the index of refraction of a material depends on the wavelength of the light in it. For the narrow range of visible light, this difference is generally small. In some situations, it is important. Because different wavelengths represent different colors, different colors will be refracted to different angles. So, white light can be split into its constituent colors. This is responsible for rainbows or the spectrum of colors created by a prism. Note that the pattern of colors from a prism is reversed from the pattern from a diffraction grating. The red is bent the least and the blue is bent the most.